If you're looking for an easy and cost-effective way to take and print your passport photo, you've come to the right place. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how you can take your passport photo using just your phone and for less than a couple of dollars. Let's go. Dream vacations start here. If you have looked into either renewing your passport or getting one for the very first time, you know that getting a passport is not cheap. So having to pay an additional $16 to $20 to get your passport photo taken at a place like CVS or Walgreens by one of their cashiers only adds to the expense. Plus, there's no guarantee that your photo will even be accepted because as it turns out, that cashier may or may not know all the passport photo requirements needed to make a good photo. So with that being said, let's walk through the process of taking your very own passport photo and save you some money. Let's first go through the requirements that need to be met in order for your passport photo to be accepted. Number one, you need to submit one color photo taken in the last six months. Number two, use a clear image of your face. Do not use any filters that you would commonly use on social media. Number three, have someone else take your photo or use a tripod if you have one. No selfies are allowed. Number four, if you wear glasses, those will need to be removed for your photo. Number five, use a white or off-white background without any shadows, texture, or lines. Number six, have a neutral expression with both eyes open and mouth closed. Number seven, your photos should be taken in clothing that you would normally wear on a daily basis. No uniforms. And number eight, you cannot wear a hat or head covering unless for religious or medical purposes. And if you fall in that category, you must provide a signed statement or signed doctor's note. Number nine, you're allowed to wear jewelry or facial piercings as long as they do not hide your face. Now that we know the requirements, let's get set up to take our photo. The first thing you're going to need is a white background. If you don't have a white background in your house, you can do what I'm doing and hang up a white poster board that I bought from the store for a dollar. Or if you have a white sheet that you can hang up, that'll work as well. Now, if you already have access to photo editing software that can remove the background in your photo, you can try to use that if you know for sure that it will be of good quality. Most of them tend to cut out pieces of your body, which will cause your photo not to be accepted. But for this video, I'm assuming you don't have that capability, and so we'll just keep it simple. You don't want to be in a dark room taking your photo. In fact, the best spot would be next to a window or somewhere with natural lighting. Now, it doesn't have to be completely perfect, as we'll be able to make some simple edits to the picture later on, but you want to make sure there are no shadows that will show up in your photo. If you are getting shadows, you can move your body until those shadows are eliminated, or you can add a light to help eliminate those shadows and help brighten up your face. Once you have your lighting set, you're now ready to take the photo. Here you'll need to either ask someone to take the photo for you, or in my case, I have a tripod that I'll be using to take the photo, and then I'll be using the 10 second delay on my phone in order to give myself time to get in position for the picture. You just wanna make sure that your phone is vertical and that there's some space between the top of the frame and the top of your head, and that your shoulders are in the frame. For my phone, that's about an arm's length away. I would recommend taking multiple photos and then choosing the best one that you would want to use as your passport photo. If there happens to be too much space at the top of the photo, I can use basic editing functions on my phone by selecting edit and then selecting the crop function. And here I can reduce the amount of space at the top of my photo. Just make sure you're not using any other edit functions to alter your photo or use any filters as it may cause your photo not to be accepted. Now that we have the photo that we want to use, let's head to the website idphotoforyou.com. This is a completely free website to use, and what this site will do is turn your photo into printable passport size photos. Now, the U.S. State Department has a free passport photo tool that you can use as well. That'll crop your photo into the appropriate passport size dimensions. The only problem is that once you have your passport photo, there is no good way to be able to print it since a passport photo is only a two by two photo. And the last time I checked, there's no ability to print just a two by two photo. ID photo for you solves that problem by putting four two by two passport photos onto a four by six photo that you can then print out. I'll link the US State Department's passport photo tool in the video description if you would like to use it. It's pretty straightforward and it will automatically crop your photo for you in the right dimensions with the ability to download that photo. ID Photo for you will do the same thing, but with the ability to download a printable copy of your passport photo. So let me walk you through these steps and how ID Photo for you works. The first step is to make sure your photo is in the right format. It does have to be a JPG or JPEG image file, and it has to be less than 10 megabytes. Once we have verified that our photo meets those requirements, we can now upload that photo onto their website. 
At the upload section, you just want to verify that the country is correct and that your photo is set for passport and visa and that the print size indicates 10 by 15 centimeters or 4 by 6 inches. Then you want to choose the file you want to upload. In my case, I will select my photo that I took earlier from my photo library. Then you will need to check all these boxes to accept the terms and conditions and then select upload. Now, in case you're worried about ID Photo for you saving your image, they do have a note at the top of their website indicating that your image file will be deleted from their server within six hours after upload, or there's a link to delete your file immediately after you have created your passport photo. So no worries there. Once my photo is uploaded, I can now adjust the brightness and contrast of my photo. Since my photo is just a little dark, I'll increase the brightness and maybe add a little more contrast to make my face a little more brighter. Once I'm satisfied with the result, I will hit next. My photo will now have two green rectangular boxes and the object here is to get the top green box placed on the top of my head and the lower box over my chin. I'm just using my fingers here to adjust the boxes, but if you're having trouble, you can just use the controls at the bottom of your photo. Once I have the boxes aligned, I'll tap on make photo. You'll then just scroll towards the bottom and below the image, you'll see a countdown to when your photo will be downloadable. You can see the preview of your passport photos above and as you can see, there will be four 2x2 two two photos that you'll be able to print. Once the timer reaches zero, you'll just tap on download. And for me, this will be downloaded to my files folder on my iPhone. Or if you're using a different type of phone, look in your My Files or Files Manager to find your photo. And then I can save it again to my photo library. Now that I have my passport photos downloaded, I'm now ready to print them out. The one requirement you'll need to know about printing your photo is that it has to be printed on either matte or glossy photo quality paper. If you don't have the ability to print out your photo at home, you can have CVS or Walgreens print out your photo. Either of these stores have same day pickup. Or if you're an Amazon Prime member and use Prime Photos, you can have Amazon print them out for you and mail them to your house. In this example, I'm just gonna have CVS print out my photo. I will just do a search for CVS photo. My first option is the CVS photo official site. So I'll tap on that. Once the site comes up, you want to tap on the menu button at the top left corner. This will give you a list of options to choose from. From here, you want to select prints. Then under prints, the first option you should see is prints and enlargements. Select this option, then tap get photos. For me, it'll give me a couple of options, either from my phone or photos that I've saved on Google. I'll select phone and select photo library and I'll choose the photo I just created from ID photo for you. At this point, I don't need to add any more photos. So I'll tap done. It'll now give me a preview of the photo I want printed. Just verify that it indicates that this photo is a four by six photo that will be printed out. I can also choose to print more than one copy if I like. I'm now ready to print my photo. So I will tap order now. From here, I will select same day pickup and choose a CVS location where I want to pick up my photo. Once I have chosen my pickup location and entered my information, you can see my total amount at 42 cents. And from here, I will tap checkout. And once I enter my information, I will tap place order and a confirmation will be sent to me. It will also send me a notification once my photo is ready to be picked up, which was less than an hour for me. And here is the end result. As you can see, it is indeed a two by two photo size. And I'll just cut out one of the photos to use for my application. If you're going to be applying for a passport for the first time or have to fill out a DS-11 form, you will not attach it to your application. But if you are renewing your passport and are filling out a DS-82 form, you will attach it to the form by applying four staples vertically where shown. And that will do it. I now have a passport photo and it only cost me $1.42. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give the video a like and share it with someone who might find this information helpful as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you again in a future video.